My name's Ollie Caldwell. I'm currently 14 years old from Hampshire in the UK. On my birthday, which is June the 11th, I'll be 15, which will mean I am the youngest ever British F4 racer in the whole world. Why do we like drivers? For many, a driver's achievements, be it podiums, wins, or even championships, will have given them a driver to root for. With my favourite driver, however, there's more to it than some cups and a couple of handshakes from corrupt businessmen. He may not be the next superstar that'll send the legends of the past into retirement, but that's not important. Let's talk about Ollie Caldwell, shall we? Having raced competitively in karting from the age of 12 onwards, Caldwell made his car racing debut in 2016 in the Ginetta Junior Championship before moving into British F4 with Arden. As you would have heard, he was the youngest driver to ever compete in the series' history, but he didn't look out of place, placing 14th with a handful of Rookie Cup victories to his name. He also raced part-time in the Italian and ADAC F4 series, which would come in handy as Caldwell would compete in both championships during the 2018 season, driving for Prema alongside Enzo Fittipaldi and Campos' smoke machine. Having prepared for his campaign by getting a few wins in two rounds of the F4 UAE championship during the winter, Caldwell finished 7th in Germany, scoring one win at the season opener in Oschersleben. Meanwhile, his time in Italy would be a bit more fruitful. A victory at Paul Ricard, as well as a clean sweep of three wins at Vallelunga, kept him in title contention until the final round, although he would eventually end up third behind teammate Fittipaldi and Bitex Pulcini. At the end of that year, Caldwell took victory in the GT4 category of the Golf 12 Hour Race, which, coupled with him being announced as one of Premier's drivers for the new Formula Regional Championship, should have meant positive momentum going into 2019. And if you consider 5th place with a victory at Imola a successful season, then I've got to deliver some context. The championship had just 9 drivers that completed the full season, and only 8 who were competent. In addition, Prema's other drivers, namely Frederick Vesti and Enzo Fittipaldi, dominated the series, which makes Caldwell look not so great if we're being honest. His adventure to the Macau Grand Prix didn't go swimmingly either, as a crash in lap 1 ended his hopes of finishing the race. Still, Caldwell got his move up to Formula 3 with Trident, where he would be partnered up by two experienced drivers in David Beckman and Liram Zendeli. Needless to say, the Germans beat the Brit, which is an anomaly in historical terms. Caldwell did have a few decent results though, which earned him a 16th place finish at the end of his rookie year. Following a couple of tests for ART during the off-season, Caldwell eventually ended up reuniting with the Prema outfit for 2021, driving alongside Red Bull Jr. Dennis Hauger and the much maligned Torpedo, known simply as... Leclerc. Not much was expected from Caldwell going up against two academy drivers, but at the first round in Barcelona he profited from a late race collision between leaders Hauger and Nanini and held off his competition to win the second sprint race. More podiums, including two at the Red Bull Ring, meant that by the time summer rolled round, Caldwell was sitting third in the championship. His qualifying wasn't exactly spectacular, but some decent racecraft made up for that. At least until he got to tracks where overtaking is harder than bringing competency into the British government. Oli didn't score any podiums after round 4 in Hungary, which landed him 8th in the driver's standings, although some technical gremlins like a DRS failure at Zandvoort were at least partially to blame for his poor results. They weren't to blame when Caldwell made his F2 debut at the end of the year with Campos, where he proceeded to crash multiple times in Jeddah and Yas Marina, somehow even ending up colliding with Alessio de Leda of all people. I'm sorry guys, yeah, I just completely lost the rear. That's what she said! <laughs> 2022 would be a pivotal year for Oli. Not only did he plant himself into Formula 2 on a full-time basis, but he also became a member of the Alpine Academy. This brought about some criticism, which was amplified by two things specifically. The first was Caldwell's F2 season itself, which contained some very average quali pace, coupled with an incredibly odd fetish for getting penalty points for violating track limits. Seven out of his 12 penalty points came from said infraction, which meant that he would be forced to sit out the round at Spa. The year wasn't all bad though, with Oli taking 6th place in Austria and defending well against Jihan de Ruvler at Zandvoort to score a P8 finish. Still, 21st in the standings sticks out on your resume like a sore thumb, which leads us on to the second aspect that made him unpopular. Despite Caldwell's unremarkable stats over the course of the campaign, he would test the 2021 Alpine F1 car at Silverstone alongside Oscar Piastri, and on his own at the Bahrain International Circuit. Speaking about these tests, Oli stated, It's been unbelievable and I'm quite speechless. There's nothing I could compare it to. It's everything I expected and more. 
there's nothing you can do to prepare for how it feels. Hearing the way Ollie describes his experience is akin to a kid who's just got their present from Santa. If a child could articulate itself this way, of course. When you notice that, you'll find it hard to attack someone who's only trying to live out a dream. When that happens... Like yeah. Some of my mates on Twitter, they're like slating you. They're like, oh, Ollie, Ollie fraud well. And like saying, oh, well. oh you, you don't deserve... Deserve the seat, but that's well, it's, it's an outside opinion, isn't it? I think I deserve that seat. I think I prove that every yeah. weekend. So he has to defend himself. There are a myriad of racing drivers who feel entitled to have gotten their opportunities merely because they were born to a family with enough money to run a small country. They think they rule the world or something. Caldwell, no matter how much you may argue that he didn't deserve the chances afforded to him, is not one of those people. From personal experience and reports from others, he is an engaging person who takes an interest in his interview partners. He's taken part in a course on how to protect endangered elephants in Thailand and generally tries to help protect our planet. When he got banned in F2, Caldwell, rather than making like Nisani Cordiel or others and running away, offered his apologies to Campos. How often do you know that people, never mind drivers, take honest accountability for their mistakes? The gist of all this is that whether Caldwell ends up staying in F2, goes to the Alpine LMP2 project or fades into obscurity entirely, no matter whether he wins championships or doesn't even end up with podiums at all, I will support him. Because of his morals, because of who he is as a person rather than who he is on track, because sometimes we as racing fans forget to recognise the humans driving in front of us as humans with their own dreams they want to achieve. There are better drivers, much more talented ones that grace the racetracks of the world each weekend, but it doesn't really matter. To be a good person, to show respect to others and to try and help our future, that is what really matters. That is why I like Ollie Caldwell.